so far. Oh, good fun. <laughs> Yeah, I can't answer of... that question. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's so busy today. Yeah, campus is really back to life, which is good. Oh, wow. Campus is booming. Alden, what do you do on campus today? Um, I So FIT is revamping their club site and they're looking to replace the words and the pictures with videos. So I had to go in and get filmed, which was highly uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, famous. <laughs> Guys, you have a celebrity. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> we'll get started, I think, in about one minute, just letting people join. Yeah, also feel free to grab a snack, everyone. This is, like, super chill. It's nothing, um, nothing formal. We're just here to help you guys answer some questions um, and if you're like a first year I hope you find this like you know super super informative and um, it will be recorded as well so if you miss anything at any point um, come check out our YouTube channel uh, like subscribe leave a comment uh, join our membership <laughs> if we have one. um yeah and uh, do you have anything you want to add not except that that was perfect YouTuber intro <laughs> Yes, thank you. I am practicing. <laughs> All right. I think because we have a lot of questions to get through, we'll get started. Uh, so welcome to our Mac Uni Life and Careers panel. And if you're new to Monash, welcome to Monash as well. Before we start today's event, like usual, I wish to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we gather today. My name is Anna and I am the events co-director at Monash Association of Coding, which we call Mac for short. And thank you so much for coming today. Uh, before we begin, I would like to introduce our club and who we are. So we're a coding, coding club that focuses on imparting valuable technical skills to our students. Our ultimate goal is to foster the programming culture at Monash and really provide a collaborative setting for students to help each other and learn together. And we do this by providing technical workshops and sessions like this one. What, and what sets us apart is that everything that we do really adds, produces a result at the end of the day and adds value to your academic and career journeys. Now I'll pass on to Aditi, who's going to give a, a preview of all the different openings that are um, of tech companies that are currently open. Oh, thanks, Anna. I will just share my screen. Oh, do you mind stopping sharing? Alrighty, so you guys should be seeing my internship opportunities screen now. To start off by introing myself, my name is Aditi and I'm one of two sponsorship officers at Mac. Along with Alden, the two of us have been working very closely with a lot of really cool companies across the industry to bring you a lot of amazing opportunities. And, you know, today we are talking about uni life and we're talking about careers and giving you advice. But I wanted to start off by talking about internship opportunities so that as we go through these questions, you have something you can apply this to at the end. I understand that many of you are first years. So before I dive into all the opportunities available, do keep in mind that many of these are for your penultimate year, which is you apply when you're in your second last year of your degree. You do the internship in that summer. And then you have one more year of uni and then you graduate and go into a graduate role, hopefully. There are a few pre-penultimate internships that I have included, so I'll point that one out when we get to it as well. As I mentioned, we've been working really hard this summer. So for the first time ever, I'm actually really happy to announce our sponsors for 2021. We haven't told anyone this, so you're the first group of people to know. As you can see, we've got an incredible lineup, which means an incredible number of events coming up throughout this year. We're gonna be working very closely with these companies to make sure that you have the opportunity to learn more about the skills they require and just really build cool projects with industry representatives. Our platinum sponsor is Salesforce. We also have a couple of gold sponsors, which include IMC, Google, NYOB, Microsoft, Accenture, Canva and Atlassian. And then we have our silvers, which are Google, Monash, Rinteria and Nab. I think I said Google twice, my bad. 
But yeah, Google is a silver. I'm honestly so excited. We already have our IMC event coming up soon, which I'm sure Anna will tell you a lot more about towards the end of this event. But we also have a few more in the works and stay tuned for those. Now what you're all actually here for, which is of course, internship opportunities. I'll start off by talking about some of the IT and software engineering ones. These are your traditional development roles that you hear about all the time. We've got IMC with their software engineering intern. Pretty cool because that internship allows you to do a bit of algorithmic trading and learn about how engineering is used in the finance industry. Then we have Google. There are three different internships here. The one I'd like to point out is the STEP internship. I'm sure you'll learn more about it throughout this event because a few of us have done the internship before. And this is actually a pre-penultimate one, which means you as a first year can apply for that. There is a little bit more about eligibility on the Google website, so I encourage you to read through that before applying. But this is one of the first very entry-level internship positions that leads on to more opportunities as well. We've got Canva. We love Canva, especially because these slides were made on Canva. They do both front end and back end. Their internships are actually open across the year for applications. And then it's more of an expression of interest, but now is their more formal time period, which is why I've included it here. And then we've got Atlassian. Atlassian's also got a site reliability engineer, which is slightly different, but the recruitment process and the overall experience is still very similar to back end and front end development as well. I wanted to include this because you know, we are all about coding, but technology is about so much more than just that. And our sponsors also have some really cool interdisciplinary roles available. We've got IMC again with the trader intern. This is a lot more algorithmic trading, which again is the event we have coming up. But with IMC, they actually hire software engineers and they prefer people with a technical background for their trader role as well. So it's not just limited to people that are studying commerce. Google has a business internship. You can pretty much study any degree and still apply for this. It's a really great way to understand how the business works and how they support Google as a whole. Atlassian comes in with quite a few as well. I'm a little bit biased towards the product management internship as that's what I'm doing at the moment, but there is quite a few other roles available. Some of which I am also still learning about what they do. I think it's really cool that Atlassian has really unique roles that you don't really hear about elsewhere. And yeah, those are all the opportunities I have been able to find online so far. We are quite early in on the recruitment period. So keep an eye out on our socials and also just on the websites of our sponsors, as I'm sure they'll have a lot more to offer. The final thing I'm going to do is a bit of a shameless plug because I think sponsorship is an amazing role to be a part of. I've learned so much over the past summer, just you know, how to talk to industry representatives, how to communicate with them by email, how to do contracts and invoices and how to continue that entire process and learn about how all the different companies operate. So if you are interested, please do put in an expression of interest because I would absolutely love to work with you in the future. And that is my presentation. I'll stop sharing screen. If you have any questions about this, I can see it's already started in the chat, but feel free to keep going and I'll be one of the panelists. So you can ask me more questions then as well. All right, All right. so without further ado, we're gonna move on to our Uni Life and Careers panel. So before we open the floor up to live questions today, we also, we had some that were submitted to us via the Google form that we sent out. And those are the ones that we're going through first. So first question up is, what advice would you give to students studying a double degree in, a, in commerce slash computer science or just general advice when it comes to interdisciplinary study Addre addressed to Aditi? Cool, if you aren't already sick of my voice, you will definitely be sick of it by the end of this event. So I am studying computer science and commerce at the moment. I'm a fourth year and my major for, for commerce is econometrics. It's quite difficult to be honest to give advice about this double degree because it's so broad, which is also what I absolutely love about it. You know, commerce has so many majors. So if there was one thing I could tell you, it would be just to experiment. I think it's really easy in first year to get stressed about what you want to major in, but 
to give you a bit of context, I've majored in three different things so far, and I've only been here for three years going into my fourth year. So it's really okay if you want to experiment and try different things before narrowing down on what you really want to do. You're also in a really unique position because commerce and computer science is not only very much in demand, but it's so interdisciplinary that you can go into almost any role after graduation. So again, go crazy, take a look at what's out there. One of my goals throughout this degree has been to do unique internships and to try out unique roles because it really enables you to do that. In terms of general advice for interdisciplinary study, I would say um, try to like combine your study into certain topics for certain days. Because the most draining thing about interdisciplinary study is just context switching. If you're going from writing a commerce paper to coding an algorithm, then going back to the paper and then like doing some video for marketing, it can get very draining very quickly because you waste energy in trying to retrain your brain to do the new task you're trying to do. And I just found it so helpful to really organize my time to make sure that I can get into that flow state and really focus on one task at a time. That's some great advice there. Moving on to our second question. Um, what advice would you give to students who are doing double degrees? And uh, it's a director of me, Catherine and Vivian. I guess since I'm talking right now, I'll start with some with what I have as advice. I think because as Aditi was talking before, um, I think there's uh, the context switches between the different double degrees uh, between the two different degrees can be really tiring so I think it's important to get on really get on top of things from day one and plan out what you need to do for each unit that you're doing um, and then really uh, allocate time for that um, so uh, maybe a, a day for one of the degrees and then another day for another the other degree so you're not always yeah, switching context between those two I think that's really good advice passing on to Catherine um, yeah, I definitely recommend doing double degree. Um, I know a lot of students maybe have the attitude that they just want to get their degree done as quickly as possible and don't want to do the double degree because it adds, you know, an extra year or something. But um, remember, uni is like a great time. You get to learn about yourself and get to do, you know, work experience and join clubs. So um, try not to think of it as like a race to the end. Um, and, you know, if you want to look at two different areas, like definitely um try a double degree um but i guess advice um maybe keep an eye on your course progression um i've made the mistake of kind of messing up my order of enrollment and it becomes very messy um so maybe just get enrollment help when you're doing that that's my um advice <laughs> cool yeah. um i'll go next yeah. Um, pretty much like same as Catherine, like make sure you get your course map chopped and everything just because when you have two um, faculties, they don't tend to check the other side. So it's like really important to get your course map right from the beginning. So you graduate when you intend to and everything as well. And um, yeah, just make sure you have a look at the majors that your degrees offer as well. And don't do like it's good to have um, try out different things, but also make sure you're not doing a double degree for like the sake of it and make sure you have like interest in both sides. Um, yeah. Thank you. The next question that we have is a dire directed at Alden, Aditi and Angie, and that is how and where do you apply for internships at the end of your second year? Alden first, maybe? Yeah, I'll start. I, and Aditi and Angie will definitely be able to speak a bit more on the application process them itself because they've gone through it. But uh, I would definitely say take your first year to explore different things and also attend a lot of different events with different companies. And from that, what you want to get is an idea of what company you're interested in, what company you're interested in and what roles you'd want to apply for in your internship. Um, definitely keep a spreadsheet of everything, all the deadlines that you've seen. And then by the time, you know, February or March rolls around in your second year or your penultimate year, then you will be on top of it and you can apply for things as they open. In terms of when they open, uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but or well, most of the big tech companies, they open in February and March. And then there's also like a second wave mid-year around June and July. I'll pass on to Angie. Um, thanks, Alan, for that. I think you just covered a lot of what I was going to say, but 
Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure most like bigger tech companies open around now and um, there's some also mid-year, but um, look out especially for like job opportunities from like the buy or like um, even us, we always post our listings and um, like how you actually apply. Um, I think you basically just like go on the website, they should have like a link and some like description of how I guess like um, the recruitment process works and I'll pass it on to the DD as well. Cool, so I guess I'll go a little bit more into detail about the recruitment process and the how part of the question. So both, I'll look into in particular software engineering and product management because they have quite unique um, recruitment processes. Both of them often start off with a screening interview and it's always the kind of call that you don't expect. They'll call you up at like 8 a.m. in the morning while you're still in bed and be like, hey, let's have a chat. And it's actually an interview. So it's always nice to just be prepared about you know, the values of the company, why you want to work there, a few experiences that you've had so that you're able to just have a conversation with the recruiter. And then you go into your coding interviews or your product management interviews, which is all about your technical abilities in the two different areas. There's quite a few resources out there, classics are like cracking the coding interview, cracking the PM interview. They can get very stressful and overwhelming at times. So my biggest tip for that would be to do it with friends. Having friends to like just be there for your sanity has made the biggest difference. And just if you like need to have a chat with them, if you need to rant with them or practice with them and get advice, it's very valuable. And finally, touching on what Alden said, keep track of the applications. It can be a lot. So just having a way to you know figure out which ones you've applied to, which ones you need to apply to, who you've heard back from, who you need to follow up on. It makes your life a lot easier if you can see it all in the one place. Anna. Yes, I hope that really helped you um, answer this question for you. Next we have, when do summer internship applications open for major tech companies such as Microsoft, Atlassian, et cetera, and where do I apply? So this is really similar to the question we just answered. So I'll, I'll start off, um, it's directed at me, Jasmine and Catherine, but I'll start off. Um, for major tech companies, they typically open at like, around this time. So I know Atlassian, as Adidi mentioned before, it's open now. And where do you apply? I think you should check out their website and they would have all their listings on there. Uh, does Jasmine have anything to add to that? Yes, I do. So if you want the exact date, um, you can get your paper ready because I'm just going to talk fast. And Google is open right about now, um, up until around March, and then they'll do the interview process from April until August. Um, if you're looking for Microsoft, they open up around mid-year, I think around September. And then the internship is like a four-year internship. Um, if you're looking for Atlassian, they open back in February, and they usually conduct applications on a rolling basis. So you should apply early, because if you miss it, then uh, it's gone. Um, who else? Uh, Canva also opens up for front end and back end around this time. But if you're interested in design, they open up in the middle of the year. So that's the biggest, um, I guess, trading. Optiva, they're also open around now. Um, I don't know any other places. Um, Catherine, do you have any other places that you'd consider like being that, and, uh, you know, when they open up? Um, I saw that Salesforce had positions open like right now. Um, so that's another one to go look at. Um, I know you might not know who they are, but definitely like check them out. Um, they have like great culture from what I can see. Um, so obviously they're sponsors so advice, but <laughs> no, not really. Um, I guess cool. I did have um, other advice, but I've forgotten it now, so don't worry. <laughs> Hopefully come back to you yeah, as we go on. <laughs> Well, also, can I answer the question that's on the chat? Because I feel like that's super useful. So, um, so these internships are separate to Monash's IBL program. So when you do sign up for your IT computer science software engineering degree, um, there's an option for you to undertake IBL, which is an internship program that's organized by Monash themselves. So we don't have any control over this. Um, you do the program that Monash gives you and you are eligible as soon as you get 65 WAM. Um, this is different to these internships that we're talking about today. Uh, these internships are like hosted directly by the companies themselves. And so if you do have an IBL question, we can answer that as well because a lot of us have gone through it. But for IBL stuff, you, you would be responding to Monash. But for most of these internships, you'd be responding to the company directly. And so hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of a difference, um, like understanding of what the difference is. Yeah. 
I thought of what I was going to add. I was just going to say, um, sort of like how Google had that early um, sort of like step program for people who aren't in their like penultimate year or yeah, pre-penultimate. Um, lots of other like companies also do like, you know, those programs for when you're earlier in your degree and they kind of fast track you to the internships. So I definitely recommend looking at those like top four consultancies and all that kind of do them. Um, but yeah, just look on their websites and it's all there. Thank you both for that. The next question that we had was, uh, it's a long one, Director Jasmine, is it true that you have less job prospects and opportunities if you use your IT degree to major in things like interactive media? Um, this person loves everything design, but worried if it's harder to find a job compared to other majors like computer networks and security. Um, I, I guess just to summarise, this is, this is fake news. <laughs> um, whoever said this, that you, you're going to have less jobs if you do IT, um, that is not true at all. But I will say, however, that like your degree, sorry, can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay. So yeah, I will say though, that like your degree is what you make of it. The roles that you can apply for is essentially a combination of your degree and like the experiences that you have outside of your degree. Um, so just to give you an example, I've worked in a lot of like, I've worked in like software engineering roles um, and I've worked in design roles and more of like generalist IT roles. And that is all just because um, you can choose to pursue things outside of your degree as well. So say, for example, you want to do interactive media um, for your degree, but then you want to learn coding um, as, during your side projects. And then you can like come up with like a really cool website and you develop it. And then that means like that makes you just as eligible to apply for front end internships as you are um, like someone else who's actually studying like computer science, for example. And so really my biggest advice is um, don't focus on your degree, um, focus on what you want. Um, in my case, I really wanted to do um, product design and it doesn't matter what my degree is like I major in software development um, and, and I still do like design stuff on the side and that kind of like made me eligible to apply for my product design roles so in short your degree doesn't really matter uh, what matters more is what you do outside of it and that includes your um, extracurricular your side projects um, anything else uh, work experience as well so yeah Cool, thank you. Hopefully that clarified what it, um, your question for you. The next question that we had was, what is the interview process like to get into Google? And that is directed at me and Angie. So for context, I did, I did the STEP program, uh, STEP interview, uh, STEP internship at Google last summer. And the interview process for me was, so first of all, you obviously apply through their website and then there was an online challenge, which was a two coding questions that we had to complete in a 45 minute window. And then after getting past that, the next thing that we had to do was technical interviews. So I, for the STEP program, I had two technical interviews. And then after that, after getting past that, I was sent to hiring committee, which is the place that they review your the result in the online challenge in the technical interview and obviously your resume as well to see if you're a fit and then after that i was directly in but angie's is slightly longer and she'll tell you about it uh yeah so basically like after the te two technical interviews i had that as well um so instead of being straight like, sent straight to the hiring committee um you're basically asked to like fill in a few docs which basically just outlines like um what your interests lie like what projects you want to work on and this is basically all for like the host matching stage. So this is like kind of to find like um, a software, an existing software engineer who's kind of like your manager in your internship and to see like, um, to basically find a project for you during your internship. So you like send in your Google form with all your preferences and then like the hiring, sorry, the recruiter will try to find like a host to match you. And you'll sit through some interviews, um, talk to some engineers, see like if um, the project they're working on resonates with you and if they like you as well. Um, and then after you have these interviews, then basically you get the um, position, like yes or no. And yes, it's a little bit um, longer than the steps, but it's kind of the same. All right, hopefully that was um, clear for you. The next question that we had was, what was the highlight of your experience at Google at Angie? Awesome. Oh, I feel like Anna, you could probably talk a little bit as well later, since we both did um, the internship. But um, personally for me, I think like the highlight was the culture. And I know like before I was going into Google, everyone told me that like Google was known for their culture. But like, I was like, okay, yeah, like it's great. I'm, like, but how great could it be? And like after interning, like, and even though like my internship was online, I could really see like how amazing the Google culture was. Um, 
like everyone's like so amazing everyone's so nice and helpful like even to the point where like if you're stuck on something you can literally just go like message someone and be like please help and like because everyone's so willing to help you and they're just so nice like they'll just block out like a half an hour call with you and just like sit you down until like you know what you're doing and like everyone's just so eager to help you um and also like another thing that I really love is just like but the culture is just like, so playful and there's just like so many things like so many fun events that happen at work like it doesn't feel like you're just stuck in office like the whole day um like in our intern events we got to like do cocktail making we had like drag bingo we had like candle making sessions it was just like a whole load of fun as well as like the serious work as well um that's kind of like my highlight but Anna do you want to add anything your highlights are all my highlights as well <laughs> Uh, if I was to add one thing though, it was that I, I really liked the work that I got to do. So the internship, the step internship and both and the software engineering internship, I think they're both really technical. So you're coding and you're working on like an actual project from day one. And I was literally coding from day one and coding until pretty much the last day that I was there. So it, I, I personally really like that because that was that's a career pathway that I want to go down. So if you're into if you're looking to go into a really technical role, in the future, then I think the internship will definitely be for you. The next question that we had was, how are IBL applicants assessed and what are some things that applicants would be asked to provide? Um, Jasmine? Yeah, uh, I can talk about this. So there's like, uh, I think there's two main stages that you can expect for IBL. Um, actually, I guess three. Um, the first one is the screening is what I would call it but all the screening part is like what they're checking, whether you meet the eligibility criteria, which is getting 65 where minimum. And to check that you're like, um, like you haven't, um, like you've done enough FIT units to start IBL. And that's kind of like the screening, for example. So as soon as you get 65 where, you know, you're in like the selection. And at that point, um, they don't care about anything else. And they really only care about, you know, um, your interview skills pretty much. Um, yeah, and then I guess once you do get that 65 WAM, there's two interview stages. The first one is um, kind of like um, ass assessing how fit you are to like start work in, to like work in the industry. So this is what I would call like the screening interview, I guess in real life, where they ask you to what two or three questions um, relevant to like yourself. Uh, it's kind of behavioral stuff. For me, for example, because when I applied for IBL, they, um, I was already doing an internship. So they asked me kind of like, yeah, what would you get out of this ideal experience that you don't already get in your ex in internship? Just an example of what they would ask. Um, this is a really easy interview. This is more kind of like assessing, you know, how you talk um, and making sure that you are ready to start IBL. And so that's like 10 minutes, um, no more than that. So it's really chill. Uh, after that is when you, it's kind of like the real interview, as I would say. Um, in the real interview stage, you get to interview with all the companies that IBL um, partners with that you're eligible for. And yes, you are expected to provide like a, like a resume at this stage. And, but that's not really like a resume. It's more just like a list of what you've done and all the things that you want to show to the recruiter. So I guess it's not really a resume. It's just something that you, um, that will help the recruiter to know um, what to talk about during your interview. And so my biggest advice when you're doing IBL is not necessarily, you know, to make your resume look good. It's more to like improve your interview skills and like talking skills. Cause um. Um, at that point, they're interviewing like 50 to 100 students and um, they, all the resumes are going to blend together. Um, and what can really make you stand out is just the way you compose yourself, you know, how you hype yourself up, how, how you hype yourself up during an interview, showcasing the best parts of you. And it does only last for 15 minutes. So really the biggest point is, you know, um, just the talking skills, like the biggest advice that I can give you um, for how to make it through IBL. Because then once you get to, once you pass the 65 WAM point, that's like pretty much everyone's equal at that point. So it does give you like a bit of more of like an even playing field compared to other people who have like a million experiences already. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you're a first year, you should definitely apply for IBL in your second semester. Um, like don't miss the application window. Uh, yeah, that's all I can say. Thank you, Jasmine. That was some really good advice. Uh, yeah. The next, the next question is also directed at you. Who can uh, go to support, uh, go to for support when trying to learn, trying to self learn something, for example, a new technology that isn't covered in the units that you're taking? Um, yeah, um, what I would say is I'll give you my experience when I was learning um, a bit about UX design. And really all it is is a load of Googling. So you start by Googling one thing and then you familiarize yourself. And I know it's going to be super overwhelming because there's like a million links 
And so my advice would be to pick one of those, like even if it's not the best one, just pick one. And then like just familiarize yourself with that one thing. And then while you're reading that same article, you're eventually going to find like the keywords to look at. And so if there's some things like keywords that you realize, oh, what does this mean? Um, and then you go and look up that other keyword. And then eventually you look up articles for that keyword and then you come up with a bunch more keywords that you can look up. And so it's really just like searching for one thing and then you will eventually have like a collection of a bunch of keywords that um, you can look up eventually. So don't feel pressured to know everything from the start. Just like remember the word, just being exposed to like all the terms that you could be looking up in the future um, will help you in like learning something new. So yeah. Thank you. That's some advice that I can definitely use when I'm self-learning something as well. The next question is, when do students normally start applying for internships? Where can international students look for internships that accept them? And that is a, um, a directed at Aditi, Angie and Jasmine again as well. Aditi, can okay. start? Yeah, sure. So in terms of when, I'm assuming that means like within, when within your university time. As I've mentioned, there are a few programs you can apply for in your pre-penultimate year. So that's when you have two years of uni to go. So for example, if you're doing a three-year degree, you would do it in your first year. If you're doing a four-year degree, that would be in your second year. They include things like the STEP internship as well as insider programs from the big four consulting firms. These are designed really to just give you a taste. They're usually a lower workload than an actual internship, but of course, super valuable nonetheless. The actual big like load of internships that comes through is usually in your penultimate year. For a three year degree, that would be in your second year, start of, you would apply at the start of your second year. And then for a four year degree, that would be in your third year so that you do the internship in that summer before you graduate. Um, I think that's most of it. Again, like different companies have different recruitment processes. So as Alda mentioned before, if you see something that you really like and that you would want to apply for, just keep track of it, set yourself a reminder but based on when they've had their applications in the past so that you don't miss out accidentally. I'm actually not too sure about the international students part, so I might pass that on to Angie or Jasmine. Well, thank you. I can talk um, about international if you want. Yeah, I might pass on to Jasmine. I feel like I did cover okay. most of the parts I was going to say. All yours. Yeah. Okay, so for the international students, um, unfortunately, most internships in Australia do require you to be like either a permanent resident or a citizen. A citizen. Um, there are some exceptions to that, and I, I don't have a specific place that you can get it from. But the most common way that you will find um, internships for international students is like Monash, what's it called? Monash Connect. Um, career, no, Monash Korea Gateway. Um, that's where you would be most commonly find the ones that um, international students um, accept like th that accept international students uh, second would be like job boards in your own country um, usually a lot of companies you know like Google they have their own offices in like your own country and then you can apply there um, also uh, IBL is a program that's for everyone so if you are struggling to find an internship just just make sure you get IBL because IBL is going to be like uh, probably the, the easiest way for you to get like an internship for an international student yeah Thank you. Um, the next question that we had was, what are the differences between Mac and Wired and are there members of clubs, um, students who are members of both clubs at Jasmine? Oh, nice. So I've been looking forward to this question. I'm um, not really, but um, first of all, are there, some, are there students who are members of both clubs? And I'm going to say yes. Um, if you're a first year, I actually actively encourage you to join all the clubs. So when I was first year, I spent like $50 signing up to all the random clubs mostly to get like the freebies and enter the lottery. But the biggest, um, the biggest reasons you should join all the clubs is because they all kind of like differ slightly in terms of opportunities they provide. So say for example, Mac has very different sponsors to Wired and obviously, you know, being subscribed, like if you're a member of both, you'll get access to both of their newsletters. And at that point you're getting like twice the newsletters. And so if there are opportunities that like, for example, if Wired has sponsors that Mac doesn't have, and then if Mac has sponsors that Wired doesn't have, at the, at the very least you're getting both of them in your email and then you can keep track of that. And so that's why I recommend um, joining both. But as for like the main difference on what, um, what Mac and Wired is, 
I can't tell you what white is because even I don't know what white is, but um, I can tell you a little bit about Mac. Um, what Mac is, is where um, if you join Mac, um, I can say that we're very focused on seeing more of like the, the bigger picture than the tech industry as a whole. So we're not very IT or like coding focused. We do look at things in a bit more like holistically. So if you're interested in um, like coding, that's good, front end, software engineering, product design, product management, anything on like the tech spectrum, that's, um, if that's your, if you're not kind of like sure what you want to do, but you know that you want to work in tech, Mac is probably like the right place for you. And if you're someone who's looking for, um, looking to attend events to learn like practical things, where if you go to an event and you want to have like, by the end of it, you want to have something to take away, something that's tangible, then that's more for like Mac as well. Um, yeah, and also if you're someone who kind of wants like a, like a safe space where you can collaborate with others, meet new people, learn new things, and just like bounce ideas off with lots of people who are super nice and friendly, um, that's also probably, you can find that in Mac as well. And yeah, um, you can, if you do want that, um, you can find us on campus. But the best place you can probably talk to us is right now um, is on in our Discord. Uh, someone from our marketing team will plug the link. But, you know, if you ever have any question, if like even after this um, talk, you have like any other questions, just ask us there. And one of the Mac committee will always just like reply and give you advice. So I hope that answers your question. Um, yeah. Thank you, Jasmine. The next question that we had was uh, what experiences and projects were on the resume that you got that got you into your first software engineering internship addressed to Aditi, me and Jasmine. So maybe Aditi can go first. Um, yeah, so my first internship was also the step internship that Anna just finished. So I applied for that at the start of my second year. To give you a little bit more context, I had never actually coded a single line before coming to university. So by the end of my first year, I was still very much learning how to code. And my complete honest answer is I did not have any projects on my resume for that first software engineering internship. It has since changed, but I was very involved with clubs and societies. I had that technical background because of my degree. and the point of the STEP internship is for people who have almost zero experience in coding to show them what it's like to work in the industry. And so, yeah, that's my answer for that. I guess I'll go next. I had, a, I put, when I applied for the internship at the start of last year, I had just applied, I just gotten into the events officer role at Mac. So I definitely put that down because Mac being, like a very technically focused club, it really highlighted my passion for the area. And I think that was what really helped me. Um, one of the things that really helped me in uh, help my resume stand out. And I did have some um, projects and those were the projects that I did, uh, but uh, quite major ones that I did in a, in my units that I did at university. And then I described, although I wouldn't, wasn't able to provide the code because obviously it was in internal, to, like on, on a Git server that was internal to the university, but I described the project and I put down all the different languages that I used and all the technologies that were a part of the project as well and highlighted them in bold on my resume so that it looked like the project was, um, it highlighted my technical skills and yeah, so those two things, um, extra, I guess, in, to summarise, extracurricular activities and also projects that you did um, at, at, in class, but even if you're not able to provide the code, highlight the technologies that you used. Yeah, Jasmine? Hello, I'll show you guys a resume that I applied for so you can see how like, yeah, do you, I, can you stop sharing your screen quickly? <laughs> but like, basically when I applied, my first internship was also the Google Step internship. And when I applied for that, I literally just like started first year. And so I don't even have like a lot of uni experiences either. And like, I'll just show you guys. So this is kind of like the resume that I applied with minus the Google thing. And so you can see, I literally had nothing. Um, I could say that, yeah, I studied, I studied uh, at Monash and I went to uh, a high school in Perth. And, but literally in terms of what my experiences that was on my resume uh, was like my engineers without borders, um, volunteering experience and like robo gals as well. Um, this wasn't even real. I was just like, I went to one workshop to teach and I put that on my resume, you know, and I did have some awards from high school. 
as well. And I guess uh, pre when I applied to Google, it was this was replaced with like a random in volunteering thing that I did in high school, which was like, eh. So it's really all about, um, I didn't have a lot either. And the biggest thing I would say is just like, uh, put stuff there, even if you feel like it's not important, um, just put volunteering things. Um, you don't know where you might end up, so. Hopefully that answers that question. The <laughs> next question that we had was, um, how, can being a, how can being a member of MAP help me develop my technical skills, Jason? Uh, yeah, so quickly to answer someone's question, that was my um, resume for my second year, but the content is pretty much the same as like what I did in my first year, minus the Google internship. And it was replaced with like my high school, like random volunteering experience from ages ago. Um, from yeah uh, cool and how can being a member of map help me develop my technical skills uh, help you develop your in technical skills in short most of math what gives you is your soft skills you learn more about you know how to work in like a project setting setting applying some of like the agile pr practices that you learn at uni but in terms of technical skills itself that will depend on the portfolio that you join majority of the teams um, they learn they do like sponsorship for example does more um, of like presenting and learning communication and negotiating marketing learns more about like you know uh, like graphic design and all that um, yeah so coding that will depend we're working on our website at the moment so that is one area that you can learn your technical skills but in terms of work that's actually relevant to Mac for the most part it is um, more, more of your soft skills yes but soft skills are just as important as technical skills in the role as well. Oh, in life in general, I think as well. Uh, the next question, I think this is also the last question that we had submitted. Uh, I'm an international student that currently studying IT software development. What skills or area would you recommend to study or focus on in order to have a better chance at securing an IBL placement at Vivian and Jasmine? Jasmine, you can go first, maybe. Uh, Vivian, do you want to start? Okay, sure. Um, so I don't do software development, but I think like having a coding portfolio would be really good if you do have one. Um, just showing that you can apply like what you've learned at uni and that you're interested in what you do. Um, but other than that, I feel like they really focus on soft skills and like your ability to like um, present yourself in an interview and show that you can work with other people and like have evidence to back that up as well. So like definitely having a part time job or like joining a student society, showing that you can work with other people and things like that. Um, with the part-time job, it doesn't even have to be tech-related. That's something that they actually include in the application as well. They're like, um, we recommend that you pick up a part-time job when you're applying for IBL, even if it's not um, kind of tech-related. But yeah, and just applying to summer internships if you can and fit them in before your IBL, that'd be really good to get experience beforehand as well. That's all from me. Yeah, um, just everything that Viv said. Um, basically, once you get that 65 wham and you're, you you pass the first um, behavioral interview, which is like 10 minutes, just asking what your motivation is to do IVL. Once you get past that, at that point, it's like really like an even playing field. Um, you don't even need to code if you don't want to. Um, I didn't have any coding projects and I really just like talked my way in the interview, like knowing your own strengths, knowing um, what to actually display to the interviewers when you're talking, um, can like just like knowing how to sell yourself is essentially like the biggest skill that you should probably work on when you are applying for IBL. Um, there are maybe one or two companies that are very picky and want you to show your portfolio, but that's like two companies out of 50 or a couple, um, two out of 50 roles that are available. And so I wouldn't focus on that if that's not your strength. I would focus more on like learning how to sell yourself to the interviewers. Okay, so that concludes our questions, the questions that were submitted to us via the submission form. But we'd like to now open the floor up to questions. So were there any questions that came in that weren't answered in the chat um, that you wrote down, Chi? Um, this one sort of was answered, but I think it's interesting. We should talk about it. Um, it was, do you have any advice for applying beyond just filling in like an online application? Um, say, have you guys ever, you know, got in touch with recruiters on LinkedIn or just even, you know, good old fashioned cold call, but you know, which mm -hmm. NZs does play <laughs> not a, not going to happen, but yeah, pretty much what else can you do apart from, uh, online application? I might 
um was has anyone ever done this so i i haven't personally tried that yeah i was just gonna say i know Ria like did that (laughs) she like i've done it okay there you go you can talk to your experience yeah Okay, well, I did one of two. Okay, first of all, if you're applying at a club setting, literally just talk to us. I love talking to people. And if you do talk to me, I'll be more, I'll, inc- I'll be more inclined to remember you if you apply to like the next recruitment period, I'm just saying. But if you're applying to companies, uh, I did a lot of things. I would, uh, I would like connect with random recruiters on LinkedIn. Um, that's, how, that's how extra I was because I really wanted the role at Canva. So I would like stalk random people from Canva and I'd be like, oh, hey, that's really cool. Um, and then... I just want to connect with you and follow more of your story. I didn't, I didn't ask them for a role at Canva, but I just stayed connected with them. And then, so when I did come to the interview, I had stuff to talk about, about like how, um, oh, hey, yeah, I saw this person on LinkedIn or whatever. Um, other than that, I would also go to like recruiter specific events. Um, I did go to one Canva event that was hosted by Unimel. Like I know it's not from Monash, but like just go anyway. Um, like you will see there's a lot of other universities who are sponsored by other companies. So if they're hosted on Zoom, like just go, it's, it's free for everyone. And I think um, I like the recruiter, I noticed she was Filipino and I was just like in the chat, oh, hey, I'm Filipino as well. And you know, I feel like she might've remembered me by saying that, I don't know if that's true. That might've been just an anecdote, but she that did, I think maybe help me go through screening and I get, got the internship. So yeah, just making yourself stand out. Um, just being, I know it's scary to talk when there's a lot of people, but like if you try and just stop caring, and just say and make yourself known to the recruiter that will definitely give you an advantage awesome thanks for that well so i'll jump in with another one that's sort of in the same vein um what about like getting referrals from like your friends and stuff who are already in companies do you guys have experiences with that yes <laughs> jasmine wait i think a duty you can talk more about that yeah i can definitely talk about that I would say do it. Like if you can get a referral, use your network, use your friends, talk to them. Um, you know, no one knows you better than yourself, but also your friends. So I'm sure they'd be happy to refer you. But I think the only thing about referrals is be cautious about it and be empathetic. Don't pressure your friends into doing it because they also have pressure from their employer's side. And so it's a tricky relationship there. If you're comfortable with someone, do it. And another thing is if you've worked with someone, so if you're in a club and you've worked with them in a committee together, talk to those people because they've actually seen you work and they're able to vouch for you a lot more. The only other thing I would say, just to give like a bit of transparency about how referrals work is often they'll, the person that's referring you will be asked for things like your resume, um, portfolio, GitHub URLs, that kind of thing. So make their job easy. Give them examples of what you've done, examples of how you've worked together. You'll just give them the URLs from the very beginning because the easier it is for them, the more inclined they will be to help you as well. Yes, thanks so much, Aditi. Um, were there any other questions that were uh, unanswered from before, Chief? Sure. Um, not really, I think. Um, Might just like jump in. I heard people um, like asking about like, oh, what should I be doing now? Like, or like, what can I work on? I don't know. It might work, it might not, but like just like a tip sometimes, like if there's like a a company or a position you're wanting, um, sometimes I just like look people, like you can just look up a position like on LinkedIn and you can find people with that position. You can look at like what they've done or like what's their career path and like kind of gives you an idea of like, okay, they've done this and this, or like they studied this and they were in this club or they, I don't know, had a startup or I don't know, something like that. So you can kind of get like ideas from other people as well. Um, yeah. So LinkedIn just pretty great um, for that kind of stuff and like connect with people if you want, like, like message them, but obviously it's kind of hard if you don't know them, but whatever, like they can just say no, I guess, <laughs> but yeah. I saw a question that just came in um, in the chat and it's directed at Alden. If I want to do a data science or if I want to do data science or AI, is having a minor or major in statistics necessary? Um, I, I guess it depends on like, at least from what I know, if you want to be like the person that's 
creating all the cutting edge algorithms, then yeah, you need really strong mathematical foundations. But if you're looking to apply them with all the different libraries that are out there, then like you don't, you don't really need to have the mathematical knowledge, but Sai is, I'm not, is Sai here? Or not anymore? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I, like if you're interested in doing data science and AI, then like math is always going to pop up. So I definitely consider doing at least a minor in it if it's your interest. Okay. So are there any other questions? You can feel free to put in the chat or unmute if that if you're comfortable to do that, comfortable to do that as well. Or but, um, join our Discord because we have like threads full of questions like these and advice. Um, you can ask more questions or you can DM like any of us, like we're all about helping other people and giving advice. So um, definitely just like message or yeah, connect with us. Can I jump in here? Yep. Just ask a question. Um, I'm in my second year and I have some electives coming up. I'm doing basically, com I'm doing computer science degree. And I'm just wondering what like units do you guys really suggest like are really helpful to just uh, really you find to be applicable now that you guys have done what, internships? So like just to some, like, some uh, units which might be useful taking. Okay. Um, I would say usability. I'm actually doing that this semester, but it's not only a relatively easier workload, it's actually really useful because being part of an internship, even as an engineer, you need to think about like the problem you're trying to solve if, if you get stuck and you need to make a decision between two different options. So yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and this uh, is um, like, sorry, this is like a bit of like a, the other side of the story, but like after doing all my internships, like I really wish that I just used my electives to study something that I wanted. Um, I don't like, I feel like when I was younger, like, or like, oh, younger, oh, I'm not that old. But like when I was in first year, I tried to force myself to do the useful units. And like looking back, I wish I didn't try myself to do that. I was like, like so just drained and I would have just like preferred to do an elective that I was actually interested in. Um, yeah, just the other side of the coin if you were thinking of doing like something completely different to computer science. All right, thank you. Does anyone on the panel have any tips for interactive media careers like games? I'm guessing game development, game design. I think Sarah can answer that. Yeah, I can answer that. Uh, I study communication di design, but also um, interactive media. So uh, I would say get to know your lecturers because they actually have pretty good connections. Like I think last year I did a kind of 3D internship at Sensi Lab at Monash. And that was just because I was talking with one of my tutors. And so that's one way. But also I think just, um, a lot of like a lot of searching online. There's always some um, like studios in Melbourne or like in Sydney. You could see if they have internships and like similar to like software engineering and stuff. You can contact like the recruiters and yeah, it's quite similar in that sense. Thank you, Sarah. So while we have five minutes left, I wanted to show you this, the final slide because it contains a QR code to our feedback form. And we, so this is the feedback form for this event today. And we want, please fill it out to let us know how we did. And also to let us know any of your ideas for events that you want to see us deliver in the future, because we're all about making events that you guys want to attend. And the form is also linked in, will also be linked in the chat as well um, for you. Meanwhile, we, we, in the last five minutes, if you have any last minute questions, please do um, fire away. Uh, or otherwise, also, if you think of a question that you wanted to ask after the session, you can ask us in the Discord. Uh, I think one just came in. Any unique advice for someone doing business information systems? Is anyone doing business uh, BIS here? Game? Yes. <laughs> um, I'm not really sure. I think just um, exploring like the different areas, maybe taking on more technical 
um, electives if you can, because like we don't get a whole lot of them. Like half of the degree is theory based, and then the other half is really like kind of technical based. But you don't go into it in a lot of depth. So if you want to be like really like across the whole board and like be able to apply for roles like software development, maybe like self teaching yourself or like doing some coding projects on the side as well to like stand out a little bit more. But yeah. I have one question. Can I jump in quickly? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering for those of you who've done technical interviews, um, how do you think the difficulty of the actual technical questions you get compares to, say, if you're doing a grad role? Do you find them difficult? Yeah, Obviously, I... you've done a grad role, so maybe you can't necessarily answer. But my main question is more around like when you had those 40, 45 minute coding interviews, um, did you find that you needed a lot of preparation for them? Or did you find that they were reasonably straightforward at the, at the internship level? Um, I can jump in with this if you want. Yeah. Um, so I was like, during my internship, I was actually like preparing to convert. So um, I did like my internship and I did like the 245. And then basically with Google, um, like throughout your internship, like if you're in your penultimate year, like you're about to graduate, um, like the year you're doing the internship, then you'll sit like two more conversion interviews. And this is like at grad level. And personally for me, um, I found it like a lot more challenging, like the questions that I was like asked um, compared to like the internship level. So like, I remember like when I was studying for like my intern um, technical interviews, I think I grinded for like about like two weeks or so. Like, and note that I also had taken like 2004 beforehand. So I kind of had like algorithms and data structures like fresh in my mind. Um, but like at that level, I was kind of aiming for doing like leak code easy to like leak code medium. But um, at my time at Google, I kind of had like an opportunity also to like interview with like software engineers each week. And um, they kind of gave me like an idea of like the difficulty level that I could be expecting. And not going to lie, it was like a lot harder than interns. So I'm probably talking about like the harder like leak code mediums to like hard. But yeah, it's there's quite a gap, I believe. Well, that's just me personally, but um, yeah, anyone else? I was just going to say, if you want to like start preparing, we're going to be um, running like leak code, like coding interview prep um, soon, like maybe on like Discord or Zoom or something and just going over like leak code problems together. So it might be good if you want to, I don't know, study with us. <laughs> yeah, interesting. All right. Thanks. It's actually good to have that perspective. Okay, I think because some of us have to have other meetings after this one, we'll probably do a wrap up now. So thank you everyone for coming. Uh, if you have any more questions that you weren't able to get uh, ask us today, make sure to follow us on, uh, join our Discord server and follow us on social media. We're, we're always open to um, answering your questions. And uh, so please do, do not be afraid to ask. And our next event after this one would be our IMC, our collaboration with IMC, which is a, a trading algorithm event. Uh, and so that would be in week two and we'll be promoting that on our social media. So please do follow us on there to see what's up. Uh, but other than that, thank you everyone for coming and thank you to all our panelists for their, for their advice and for their lovely answers to the questions. And yeah, thank you everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Bye.